Hello everybody, this is Sabra from Love English. Hello everybody, this is Sabra from Love English. Hello everybody, this is Sabra from Love English. So hello everybody and welcome back to Love English. Now what did you notice about the difference between those three different introductions? Other than that, perhaps one was more interesting than another. What was the difference? So of course guys, the difference was the tone. Forget my facial expression, which obviously could convey some meaning as well, but the tone changes the meaning. So this lesson is a highly requested lesson all about intonation. Now intonation is one of the biggest ways in which we express meaning, in which we really show what's important, if we're going to continue speaking, if we wish the other person to speak, all of that actually comes from the tone of the voice. The voice is like a musical instrument. So today guys, we're going to learn all about how you can improve your intonation and we're going to look really at the rules of intonation. So I guarantee this is going to help you sound more natural and improve your speaking. As you know guys, I'm Sabra and I'm a university English teacher. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, hit that notification bell and you can also follow us on our social media. We've got our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and you can also learn more about us and get our free ebook at our website www.loveenglish.co.uk. So having good intonation is an integral part of having good pronunciation in English. So English mainly has two tones, a rising and a falling intonation. So we're going to look a little bit at the rules now for when to use the rising or the falling intonation. The first one is in yes or no questions, we usually use a rising intonation. A yes or no question means where we can answer either yes or no, or something that is very clear. The answer is black and white. For example, are you British? The answer would be yes or no. Let's look at a few more examples. Do you love English? Do you love English? Will it be sunny at the weekend? Will it be sunny at the weekend? Are you a fluent English speaker? Are you a fluent English speaker? You will hear with all those three sentences that the tone at the end goes up. Are you a fluent English speaker? The tone at the end goes up. This is for yes or no questions. In most other questions, we actually use a falling intonation, which seems a little bit strange as it is a question, but that is actually correct. Let's look at some examples. Which is the quickest way to get to the university? Which is the quickest way to get to the university? What do you think the answer to this question is? What do you think the answer to this question is? How often do you practice your English? How often do you practice your English? Who here loves chocolate? Who here loves chocolate? You will hear at the end, particularly the last syllable, the voice falls. So in questions where the answer is not yes or no, the tone will fall at the end. The next rule is when we're making statements, so general information, facts, things like that. Again, our tone will fall at the end. For example, I've been an English teacher for 10 years. I've been an English teacher for 10 years. I'm a fluent English speaker. I'm a fluent English speaker. It's probably going to rain at the weekend. It's probably going to rain at the weekend. You can hear this very clearly in the clip I'm going to show you from the TV show, America's Got Talent. Listen to how the contestant answers when he makes statements. My name is uh, Leo Lytel. How old are you, Leo? I'm 15 years old. What do you do? I am a stand-up comedian. The next rule is that when we list things, usually the final word is more stressed and the tone goes downward. This is to convey that we are finished. I love chocolate, strawberry and pistachio ice cream. I love chocolate, strawberry and pistachio ice cream. Can you hear that my voice fades downward towards the end. I do love all those flavors of ice cream and many, many more. We can also use intonation to emphasize specific words to show how important they are. For example, don't forget to bring the laptop charger. I really need that today. Which words were stressed? So of course it was really and today and a little bit laptop charger because these are key words so they need to be emphasized. Let's look at another example. I hope you brought your warm coat. I hope you brought your warm coat. In the first sentence, warm was more emphasized because the speaker wants to convey the importance of the coat being a warm coat. However, in the second sentence, the speaker emphasizes coat, 
suggesting that it's just important that they bring a coat. Finally, the last rule of intonation is when we contrast things in a sentence. Usually when we contrast two things in a sentence, quite often two nouns, we will have a rising tone on the first and a falling tone on the second. Or it can be vice versa, but your tone will be different and this is to emphasize the difference. Let's look at some examples. I thought he liked dogs, but he actually likes cats. Did you know that people from the north of England are usually friendlier than people from the south of England? Could you hear in those sentences how my voice went more up on one of the nouns and more down on the other? That is to show contrast. So in a minute, guys, I'm going to test your knowledge of how much you've learned from this video and give you some sentences. And I want you to think about whether they should have a rising or a falling intonation and which words you think should be stressed. So number one. This would of course have a rising intonation because it's a yes, no question. Are you going out tonight? Are you going out tonight? Number two. This would actually have a falling intonation because it is not a yes, no question. It's a normal question, so it will fall at the end. What time does the shop close? What time does the shop close? This would actually have a falling intonation because it is a statement. The UK will not be leaving the European Union on the 12th of April. So here you would vary your tone on these two things that are being compared. Liverpool are having a good season, but Manchester City are slowly catching up. Liverpool are having a good season, but Manchester City are slowly catching up. Okay guys, well done if you got all of those correct. Great job. So we've come to the end of our lesson on intonation everybody, but I really hope that you put into practice these rules that I've taught you today, because I promise you it's going to make you sound a lot more natural and really improve your speaking. Make sure that you have fun practicing your intonation. It shouldn't be a boring thing. It should be something that you have a bit of fun with, particularly if you can practice with someone else. You can try emphasizing certain words and some of them might sound quite funny. So make sure that you turn this into a fun exercise. We'll see you soon on Love English, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.